Okay, so welcome to this second video on uh, the law of total probability and random variables. So I want to begin this uh, video with a warning, a warning about uh, me about continuous random variables and how uh, you have to be careful when handling them. Uh, so, for instance, let's have a look at the um, as again our archetypal example of a continuous random variable, which is uh, you have to pick uh, some real number between zero and at uh, the interval, uh, well, uh, any real number within the interval 0 to 1. And we know that this is uniformly distributed. Okay, so, uh, well, we're going to assume it's uniformly distributed, i.e. that uh, your probability of picking any uh, point is um, equal, basically, or just picking it at random. Uh, well, basically, let's ask, what is the probability uh, that uh, you pick uh, the number 4, uh, sorry, not the number 4, number 0 0.4, uh, given that you pick either 0 0.4 or, let's say, union 0 0.2, union 0 0.3. So I'm asking, what is the probability that you pick 0 0.4, given that you we know you either picked 0 0.4, 0 0.2, or 0 0.3? Well, clearly, this is a third. Uh, the problem is that if we go to the definition, this is the probability of uh, picking 0 0.4 uh, divided by the probability of picking 0 0.4 union 0 0.2 union 0 0.3. Uh, it's because uh, this on the top should be the probability of 0 0.4 intersect uh, the event that you pick 0 0.4, 0 0.2 or 0 0.3, which is just the event that you pick 0 0.4. And on the bottom, you've got the event that you pick 0 0.4, 0 0.2 or 0 0.3. Now, uh, the problem is that both of these, all, both, both of these events, the event that you pick 0 0.4 and the event that you pick 0 0.4, 0 0.2 or 0 0.3, they both have, uh, have probability measure 0. So you end up with 0 divided by 0, which is not good. Um, so uh, that's a warning about conditional ran uh, well about uh, about um, conditional probability in uh, continuous random variables. When you suddenly switch uh, from a continuous problem like this uh, to a what is now, you're conditioning on discrete events, and that's that's where you get into trouble basically, and uh, that's where we have to be very very careful uh, when we condition on um, condition on. Um, Events in discrete, pro in continuous uh, probability spaces. So now, uh, let's with that warning, uh, let's uh, look at the law of total probability uh, for uh, a continuous random variable. And the way that you solve this problem basically is what you'd say is it would be the CDF of this over the uh, sorry, not the CDF, the PDF. You you replace probability with the probability density function, and basically the exact analogous thing happens with this uh, law of uh, total probability up here basically. Uh, so if we have some abstract probability space here which is uh, omega f a set of events and a probability measure and we have some uh, continuous random variable that is ascribing it some uh, continuous set of real numbers so uh, some uh, non-discrete uh, set of real numbers so uh, count of uncountably infinite potentially. Um, then uh, we want to work out, uh, what we want to do is we want to condition on the event that each, uh, each value of this has actually happened. Well, again, the probability that that event actually happens, so let's say we have some little x in here, and we have an event which is the inverse image, x inverse of little x. Uh, so all the points uh, which are mapped onto little x by this uh, random variable x. Well, basically, uh, the problem is that the probability of this might actually be zero now. Uh, so it causes us a problem over here. So what we have to do is replace it uh, by uh, the PDF, and then we have to replace this sum by an integral. So basically, the probability of an event A over here, the law of total probability becomes... Um, equal to the integral over all possible values that x can take, so uh, let's say negative infinity to infinity, of the PDF of f, so little f of x, times the probability that a happens given that x is equal to little x uh, dx. And that is the law of total probability that we will need in the, um, in the next video. Um, and I understand if you uh, feel annoyed at me now because I haven't really justified this. And the reason is that you do need uh, a lot. Uh, you need a lot of measure theory to um, to make these statements um, properly precise.